Continuing along in the self-publishing a book online series. Oh my gosh, we're already a few of these podcasts deep into this. And today we're going to be talking about a very fascinating avenue to me. And it is owned by a publicly traded company in Rakuten. And Rakuten's fairly, fairly, fairly large company. And uh, well, it's publicly traded. Obviously, it's going to be very large. And they also own a little something called Kobo Writing Life. And that's a place for self-publishers to publish your books online. We're going to be talking about that in today's episode. So make sure that you stay tuned. And this is the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast, episode number 65. And I'm absolutely tickled to death that you took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about some of the things that I nerd out about. And that's including self-publishing books online. And we've got this full series that I'm going to be talking about so many of the avenues, but I just want to be so exhaustive about it that you have all the options in front of you and you can select exactly what you want. But before we do jump into today's content, I want to let you know that today's broadcast is brought to you by the one third of the way to 100k giveaway. And if for your chance to win the self-publishing toolkit valued at $1,490, with the two runner-up prize packages including, we're giving away a total of $3,664 in prizes. To enter, visit dalelinks.com slash giveaway. The deadline is Friday, July 31st, so you might want to enter right away. Here's a little bit of something that might be encouraging. If you already entered, awesome, very good. Make sure you confirm your entries. Check your email because if you don't confirm the entries, you're not all the way in. You want to be all the way in because we've got 253 entries right now. So your odds are pretty great. You're probably thinking to yourself, oh man, he's got 34,000 subscribers on YouTube. I'll never win this giveaway. Yeah, only 253 people like free stuff. Do you like free stuff? I hope you like free stuff because if you do, Go enter right away. Alrighty, so let's go ahead. Let's talk about self-publishing books online. In the previous weeks, we covered Amazon KDP. We covered Apple. We covered Barnes & Noble Press. And now let's go over to the other big dog, the uh, one of the four Amazon alternatives. And uh, we're going to talk about the significance of Amazon, the Amazon alternative and why this might be the most promising in my opinion. Uh, let's remember, folks, Amazon's not the only game in town. They're, they're the big dog. They're pulling in a fair share of publication profits because they're very widely known, but there are some people that may not have Amazon in their region, or maybe they just don't like Amazon or have ever tried to use Amazon. So there's other avenues we can look into. So here's this company called Rakuten. And Rakuten is pretty big, publicly traded, as I'd mentioned the very outset of this, the onset of this video, video, podcast, either way we shake it, make it or bake it. <laughs> um, they own a little company called Kobo and you're able to distribute to Kobo by way of something called Kobo Writing Life. So what exactly is Kobo Writing Life? It is a free self-publishing platform, free. Yeah, that's right, free to upload, free to distribute there. And of course they will take their percentage of fees for you to fulfill it through them. But to me, I think they actually offer a lot for the self-publisher. In fact, they have two options by way of ebook and audiobook publishing. Now, I'm gonna put an asterisk right next to audiobook because it gets a little tricky. We're in an interesting time right now. I'll come back to that in just a second here. Kobo is distributed to US, UK, Australia, Brazil, Canada, France, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Netherlands and Belgium, New Zealand, Philippines, Portugal, Spain and Turkey. Hopefully you were keeping notes, but if you weren't, I went ahead and wrote down the total number of retail sites because believe it or not, some of these regions have a number of retail sites they distribute to. So it's a total of 24 retail sites. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of distribution. If you're here in the United States, oddly enough, you ready for this? They distribute to Walmart of all places. More importantly, walmart.com and sometimes in the Walmart stores. Go back over into a Walmart store or if you have anything local to you for Walmart and go into the electronics section. Chances are very likely you're gonna see a small setup for Kobo, the Kobo Reader and their audiobooks and some of the eBooks and things like that. It's right there. It's actually kind of cool. Um, but at any rate, let's go ahead and talk about ebooks for just a moment. Everybody wants to know, dude, how much am I going to make? 
you're going to get 70% royalty for anything that is $2.99 and greater. Okay, so that is going to be the best. Unlike KDP, where you have to do $2.99 to $9.99, but if you go over $9.99, it's 35%. But if you go under $2.99, it's 35%. Nah, Kobo's just like, just keep it above $2.99, and we'll give you 70%. That's not bad. I kind of like that. Now, if you, for some reason, are like, eh, my book isn't quite worth $2.99, it's worth $0.99, cents. maybe it's worth $1.99, uh, it is a 45% royalty for anything less than $2.99. There is another exception to the rule, and I think it's important I bring it out there because I do have some self-publishers out there that do publish public domain works. So for public domain works, you get only 20%. Well, I think that's pretty reasonable. Uh, compared over to KDP, where you only get 35%, you're not getting as much, but it is public domain work. Uh, so there is that. Uh, for your ebook distribution, I already told all the avenues, but one of the areas I didn't tell you about is the fact they actually have overdrive. Now, was this, I think it was either this year or this past year, and I didn't uh, look this up before I jumped into the podcast. Rakuten did own overdrive at one point. I believe they sold it, and I apologize that I can't find the news source on this one. I didn't investigate it ahead of time, but today is not really about overdrive as much. Um, but they did own it at some point or another. There is still an agreement in place between Kobo and Overdrive for distribution. So if you want to get library distribution, you can do that through Kobo directly over into Overdrive. So if for some reason you're using aggregate publishing uh, sources like Smashwords or Draft to Digital, believe it or not, you can actually just go over to um, Kobo instead of using something like the aggregate distributors like Draft the Digital Smashwords. I'm not saying anything disparaging on those ones because I will cover those in the coming weeks. But you can go right over to Overdrive and collect 50% of your retail pricing. Now, keep in mind, when you get library distribution, you're going to end up charging more for your ebook than you normally do. In fact, it's generally recommended that you price your ebook two to three times more than your, your normal retail's pricing. <clears throat> Sorry, choking on my words. Um, so uh, you're, if your book is, say, for instance, at $9.99, you're going to probably want to price it at, say, $19.99 or $29.99. And the reason is, and a library is going to buy that book, okay? And then it's going to be checked out and loaned to library patrons time and time and again. So you want to make sure you're getting your money's worth. Now, rest assured, if they buy one copy, they can only lend one copy, uh, it gets a little bit tricky into getting into Overdrive because it's not like if you distribute through Kobo, you're going to automatically get into there. Overdrive wants to make sure that there's proof of concept and that people are going to uh, want to to buy this before they distribute there. They will not accept anything less than 99 cents through their platform. So if you want to distribute it as a perma-free book, that just won't happen. Overdrive won't take it. Uh, the file types that Kobo will take is actually Doc and DocX. They'll take ODT. EPUB, and here's an interesting one, Mobi. Now, Mobi is actually typically reserved for Kindle Direct Publishing because it's a Kindle readable file. Um, in fact, if you've ever uploaded a manuscript to KDP through Doc or DocX or PDF or EPUB, they automatically get it to where they uh, convert it over into Mobi. So sometimes if you ever uploaded your Doc, and you discovered like, oh my gosh, everything's all messed up. It's because they convert your document over to Mobi. So here's the crazy thing is Kobo's like, oh, you have published on Kindle Direct Publishing, do ya? Well, we'll take your Mobi. Now, the thing is though, they have an auto conversion feature that sends it over to EPUB. So if you come with a doc or docx, ODT or Mobi, they're gonna convert it to EPUB. If you come with EPUB, great. They're just gonna leave it alone. It's gonna be set. The file size, the maximum you can do is it has to be less than 100 megabytes, which is a lot. Unless you're doing a very, very detailed picture book with heavy graphics and such, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but either way, file size, less than 100 megabytes. All right, so that's the ebook portion of things, All right? That's where they've really hung their hat on over the past few years, but now they're starting to break out into audiobooks. So I'm going to tell you why there was an asterisk there next to it when I first talked about it. 
But let's talk about how much you're gonna make from it. You're gonna get about 45% royalty, and that is for anything that's $2.99 or greater. Now you weigh that against someone like, for instance, uh, Audiobook Creation Exchange, you're only getting 40%, or you're getting 25% at non-exclusive through ACX. There's other avenues you can be able to use. Either way, 45% is pretty stinking good, $2.99 or greater. Now, um, when you're looking though at Kobo, they have something else that's pretty interesting. That they're not just selling your book, they actually have a subscription-based service, and it's 32% of the retail price that you get this. Now, sadly, it's an all or nothing model. You get the sales and subscriptions, or you don't get the sales and subscriptions. Uh, they won't allow you to opt out of the subscription. It's just something available through their platform. Be interesting to see them kind of offer that. That way, if for some reason someone doesn't want to have that lower royalty or have it put out in subscription-based service, they can just go ahead and opt out. Um, they didn't make any indication of getting rid of it anytime soon. Now, Kobo audiobooks are only accessible through aggregate platforms like Find Away Voices or Listen Up's another one. Uh, there's a few other ones that's kind of looting my brain right now. The reason I, I had to say an asterisk is I actually did a little bit of digging and apparently they're starting to roll out beta access to account holders and publishers for audiobook distrib distribution. So if you want to skip something like, say, a Find Away Voices or anybody else that's going to Kobo audiobooks, then all you got to do is apply for access. And I found the actual email. It's writinglife at Kobo.com. Again, that's writinglife at Kobo.com. And you just ask for that access. I have yet to get the opportunity to send in a request, but I definitely would love to do that, especially at a 45% royalty in the subscription option. It's just a no-brainer to me. Um, all right, so there's other author services that they uh, they have available. Keep in mind, they probably have some type of an affiliate relationship with them or maybe a sponsorship or a partnership of some sort. But their other author services include buying ISBNs, getting reviews, choosing pre-designed covers, work with a cover designer, ask a professional editor, translate your EPUB, um, and manage your rights. Uh, they have a lot of this built into your dashboard, so they kind of want to make it to where it's a one-stop shop when you go to publish through Kobo Writing Life. And I, I think that's kind of cool. Well, we've blazed through a lot of this content, and before we do get to my final thoughts when it comes to is Kobo worth publishing to, I want to give a really quick plug that this year, it's my mission to positively impact over 100,000 authors and self-publishers' lives this year. And that positive impact could be giving you enough information to finally publish your first manuscript or increasing your sales by a buck a day or building awareness when it comes to self-publishing. Either way, I'm doing that through the vehicle that I have with self-publishing with Dale over on YouTube. And we just hit a third of the way, as I had mentioned at the very beginning with the giveaway. But I'm not just looking at 34,000 people. I want to hit 100,000. And the way that I can do that is if you hit that subscribe over my YouTube channel, visit dalelinks.com slash YouTube. I've got a link inside the notes down in the description below um, or next to it or whatever platform you're going to be utilizing. Either way, you'll be able to go to dalelinks.com slash YouTube and hit that subscribe if you have been positively impacted by some of the information I've shared with you. All right, so my final tip. Um, it's, it gets a little kind of weird in how you get a Kobo Writing Life account. Uh, I don't have an affiliate for them, by the way. Uh, but I can say this, you can either just Google up publishing to Kobo Writing Life, or you can just go to kobo.com slash US slash EN slash P slash Writing Life. I would just recommend just Googling it up. If you're in a different region than the US, just substitute the US for UK, AU, Australia, you know, wherever region you are, just substitute US in there. So that's kobo.com slash US slash EN slash P slash writing life to get your account set up. I ended up setting up like a Rakuten account. So I could just log in through that way. They have various options you can do to get logged in. So is Kobo worth it? Uh, I'm going to tell you this. Of all the alternatives to Amazon, to me, Kobo is the most promising. They have the most reach and the most competition potential because Amazon's the big dog in all of retail right now. They're just absolutely crushing it online and now they're starting to break out into brick and mortar stores. So 
you look at a company like Kobo and they've managed to get into stores like Walmart. So they're, they're leveraging their resources in a very interesting way. They're getting it to where they're positioning themselves as viable competitors. To me though, the thing that's holding Kobo back right now, and this is just my opinion, is having print on demand. They don't have print on demand. However, if you go into your dashboard, you will discover that they pretty much said right now, they're just focused on eBooks and audiobook. So they probably only have enough resources and infrastructure built out to handle eBooks and audiobooks. And rather than sink millions of dollars into building out a print on demand option, they're trying to probably get it to where they have everything anchored down for ebook and audiobook before they expand into print on demand because it's not an easy business. So big kudos to them. Uh, I encourage you, Kobo, if you happen to be listening to this, we want to see print on demand. There are a lot of people out there that feel that they need an alternative to Amazon and you might just be the one. Will you? Let's just see in due time. There actually is a newsletter sign up when you do find that option inside your dashboard of where it says, hey, you want to be notified if we ever do print on demand, sign up for our newsletter. I signed up for it. So I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. So is Coba worth it? Absolutely. It's good for established authors. It's good for any author wanting to publish wide and beyond Amazon. And it's for anyone wanting an alternative to Amazon. And uh, if you want an alternative, Kobo's the one. And now that they're starting to roll out beta access to audiobooks, that right there puts them a step ahead of their other competitors in Apple. Apple's like, no, 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 no. You go to aggregate publishers in order to get to ours. Kobo's like, we'll give you a shot. But they're doing it to a limited amount of counts, so please jump on top of that. Again, you can go visit writinglife at kobo.com. Email them, say, hey, I would love to have that account. Make sure, of course, you already have a Kobo account set up. Hey, a little quick ask here. Subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcasting platform and leave a review. Speaking of reviews, I do keep an eye on those. Over on Apple Podcasts, June 30th, SJ Australia left me a nice one here with the title of Down to Earth Advice. Just started listening to self-publishing podcasts as I'm about to go through the process for the first time myself. Found this one fantastic for the tips and tricks and common sense advice for someone who's done it before. Things are explained plainly and easy without heavy jargon so that people like me just starting can understand. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, SJ Australia. That is absolutely fantastic of you to say. I would really do try to get it to where I don't say so much heavy jargon. I gotta reel myself back in every now and then. Um, but uh, this is definitely very promising. And if you would like to get a shout out in a future podcast, please do me a favor. Leave a review on your per preferred podcasting platform. I get notified through chartable.com and I will let you know myself. All right. We are starting to wrap things up, but I do want to kind of give you a little bit of a teaser and a reminder. First, a reminder. Go back on previous episodes where we talked about self-publishing book online through various uh, avenues. We already covered three platforms. We have more to cover in the coming weeks. Next week, though, this is the teaser. We're going to be talking about Google Play Books. This one's an interesting one. Uh, and you're going to get some insights here, some candid insights when it comes to Google Play Books and my thoughts about how they're great in some avenues. and other avenues, they absolutely suck. And you don't hear me say that too many times. Well, you're going to find out why I feel that way in next week's podcast. In the meantime, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I will chat with you all next week.